So now let's look at one more super fancy example. This example is going to look a little bit different from what we've done before because you'll see something in your book maybe that looks like this. And you'll say, well, this is ridiculous. There's no base graph. There's no nothing. It just tells me to graph this. I have no idea what you're talking about. We've been graphing, you know, pretty shapes and other things that are already set and defined for us. So what am I supposed to do? Well, what they want you to do in a problem like this is recognize what you're stretching and shifting and flipping. So the way to do this is to systematically get rid of everything that involves a transformation. So we start in the middle and we say, well, that plus three, that's clearly a, a shift. Then we have a smush and a flip, and then we have another smush and another flip and another shift, and what we have left is an x squared. So our function, our base function, is actually x squared, which we know is a parabola and looks like that. And if you don't know that, you can always graph it on your calculator or figure it out um, by hand, but hopefully you know that x squared is a parabola. So what we can do is we can solve it the same way that we did before and just remember that our base function is a parabola. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take a look, and I pretty much already walked you through this, but go ahead and start from the inside out. We have that plus 3. It's on the inside of the parentheses, so that means it's left to right. It's a plus, and everything on the inside is backwards, so the plus must mean I'm going to the left. And it does. Woo, that was close. All right. The next thing that's going on is that 2, and the 2 next to the x is going to be a backwards thingy because it's on the inside, so 2 is really a smush, that's what I meant to say, a smush, and uh, that's a left-right smush, then we have a left-right flip, and then on the outside we have an up-down smush, and an up-down flip, and we're going to shift down 2. So this is a super ugly transformation as well. So we'll start with the shift three to the left, shift three to the left. Now we're going to do an up down, a left right, excuse me, a left right smush. And again, you gotta be really careful when you do these left right smushes. And maybe it's just me, because I'm always doing them wrong, and I'm always afraid everyone else is gonna do them wrong. But remember, anything that's not on that y axis is gonna get smushed toward the center. So every single point, you gotta figure out how far away is it from the y axis, and how do I get it halfway closer. Okay, so that's going to be our new shape and we're going to go in like this. Now we're going to focus and do our left right flip. Flip like that. And now we can move to the outside. Everything else that we do from now on is going to be up and down. So that one fourth means we're going to shift, not shift, but we're going to smush toward the x-axis. The thing on the x-axis can stay there but everything else is going to smush down. Now I will apologize for my very poor PowerPoint animation skills that this is not going to look exactly like what you would get if you did this on a graphing calculator, but most of the time when you're doing these, your instructor is going to be like, okay, that's good enough. Um, and if you're doing it by hand, you can make it a little bit better. I'm just kind of limited by my mad PowerPoint skills. Now we're going to do our up and down flip, flip, like that. And now we're going to do our shift to down, down, like that. And so you start from a perfectly lovable PowerPoint, not PowerPoint, no, my brain's all crazy, a perfectly lovable parabola, and we're going to smush and shift it and stretch it in all kinds of inappropriate ways and get it down to that little pink thing down there. And here it goes. So we're moving over to the left. Now we're going to smush it toward the center. And we're going to flip it over. And we're going to smush it down. Smush! Again, imperfect smush graphically, but should get you the right idea. And shift it down. So that's where we ended up. And that's where we started. Now, like I said, we're just looking for the general shape here. Um, it's a lot harder to see for me with parabolas, and this is why I saved this one toward the end, is because this is something that I always have a hard time visualizing, because no matter how you smush it or do whatever you do to a parabola, it still looks like pretty much the same parabola, 
Whereas a triangle, I know what it's supposed to look like. So when I smush it or stretch it or do whatever I need to do to it, I can tell, oh, that looks different. To me, it's harder for me to look at these stretches and smushes and tell a whole lot of what we did. But um, just so you know, when you do these, you can check them on a calculator if you're given that option. So we'll go ahead and look here. I've actually got this already plugged in. You'll see I have the 1 fourth minus 2x plus 3 squared minus 2. And if I go in and I graph it, you can see that I've got it just about there. Now, if you really want to check and make sure you're understanding what's going on, if you've got a TI-84 or something similar, you can go to the Calculate button. And for this particular parabola, I can ex look at the maximum. So that's just basically going to be where the hump is. And I'm going to say, I'm going to find the maximum between here and here. I'll hit enter again. You want me to guess? No, I want you to actually calculate it. And there it's going to say, okay, my maximum is at 1.5, negative 2. And if I look, if I move this over, here we go, I can see that my apex of my parabola here is in fact at 1.5, negative 2. So I'm pretty sure I've got everything else right. The intersect here might not be perfect because again I'm not doing a perfect um, stretch or smush but in general that's how we can kind of confirm that what you're doing is at least in the right quadrant of the graph which is always a good thing